human behavior and performance are cited as causal factors in roughly 70% of aircraft accidents. Since 1949, when the Ergonomics Research Society was founded, institutions and companies have examined the ways in which human factors have contributed towards accidents and inefficient behaviour in the aviation industry. The term human factors is used to describe the study of people in their living and working situations. Their relationship with machines, procedures and the environment about them and also about their relationship with other people. The word ergonomics is used specifically to describe the study of man in his working environment, such as the position of the pilot's seat in relation to the instruments and the controls. The purpose of the study of human factors, according to the psychologist Professor Edwards in 1972, is to optimise the relationship between people and their activities. By the systematic application of human sciences, integrated within the framework of systems engineering. The recognition that human factors education was needed throughout the industry was tragically emphasised when, at Tenerife in 1977, two aircraft collided on the ground with a loss of 583 lives, a disaster resulting almost entirely from a series of deficiencies in the application of human factors, principally poor communication. Aviation authorities have taken steps to increase awareness of the role of human factors in accidents and performance efficiency, for example by the publication of safety leaflets and advisory papers, such as CAP 719 in the UK, entitled Fundamental Human Factors Concepts. The aviation authorities also require the teaching of human factors to trainee pilots. They require a current training for qualified pilots and have established a non-punitive incident reporting system called CHIRP in the UK so that crew can tell the CAA about bad aviation practices or incidents. This computer-based training course looks at those human factors which are set out in the JAA syllabus under the heading Basic Aviation Psychology, namely Individuals and Groups Communication and cooperation, information processing, human error and behavior, cognition, mental stress, and cockpit design and automation. It is helpful to use a model to aid in the understanding of human factors, such as the shell concept designed by Professor Edwards and developed by Frank Hawkins. It takes the form of blocks bearing the letters of the model. At the centre of the model, represented by the letter L for liveware, is the pilot. He not only acts on his own, but he also interacts with the other four blocks which have rough edges, to reflect that the interaction will not always be smooth and trouble-free. We will look at this central component, man, in considerable detail. The lessons on information processing errors and cognition, all deal with the possible causes of his poor performance. In part one of this computer-based training course, we looked at vision, hearing, the nervous system, respiration, circulation, sleep, and health problem areas for pilots. All of these can be the cause of a degradation of performance in the central component of the shell model. The human. The pilot, however, does not act in isolation, but interacts with the other elements of the model. This interaction, such as an argument with another crew member, may be the cause of a problem. The block labelled S represents the interaction of the central liveware component with software, that is, the non physical aspects of his human machine systems. This software includes such items as procedures, manuals and checklists, symbology and computer programs. We will look at this in the lesson on cockpit design. The problems are often less tangible in this interface and are consequently more difficult to resolve. For example, the misinterpretation of checklists or graphics. The H block represents hardware. The interface between liveware and hardware 
is the one most commonly considered when speaking of human-machine systems. It includes the design of seats to fit the sitting characteristics of the human body. It also includes the design of instrument displays and controls to match the sensory and information processing characteristics of the user. The liveware hardware interface will also be considered in the lesson on cockpit design. The E block represents the environment. The effect of the environment, such as extreme temperatures and radiation on the central component, liveware, was considered in Human Performance and Limitations Part 1, in the lesson on physical stress. The last block in the shell model is another L, another liveware, representing people other than the central component of the model. Aircrew training and proficiency testing have traditionally been done on an individual basis. However, the fact that each individual in a group is proficient does not mean that the group will perform efficiently. In this interface, we are concerned with leadership, crew cooperation, teamwork and personality differences. It is a very important interface which merits its own discipline, called CRM, short for Crew Resource Management. This Liveware Liveware interface is considered in the lessons on Individuals and Groups and Communications. We will start our study of psychology in the pilot with the consideration of the first of these, the nature and behaviour of individuals and groups.